So then another CPU comparison. This over here is the Ryzen 9 5900 X. And this over here is the 127. Wait a second, that's the wrong box. This over here is the 12700K. And you might be wondering, isn't that a little bit of a late CPU comparison? Isn't there lots of these out there already? And yes, there are, and most of them are for gamers. But for creators, I don't think there is a video out just dedicated for creators. If you're a video, photo, 3D, other creator, you might be wondering which one is better for you. Well, let's find out. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out whokeys.com in the video description below. I do want to say a big thank you to CCL who provided me with these two CPUs in order to make you the helpful content and, you know, supporting the channel. So thank you very much, CCL. So next time you are actually building a PC or or choosing your next creator, PC tools, laptop tools, computer components, check out CCL as well, especially the GPU range and CPU range. They've got lots of different things available over there with very competitive prices. And I'm not sure when you're watching this, this Ryzen 9 is actually on a killer deal right now. So if you wanna go check them out, check them out in the description below. First of all, let's have a look at how these two CPUs compare to each other on paper. Both of them are 12 cores, but the 12700K has 20 threads whereas the 5900X has 12 cores 24 threads. In terms of PCIe Gen generation the 12900K here supports PCIe Gen 5 up to Gen 5 it can support lower as well but the 5900X only PCIe Gen 4. In terms of RAM the Ryzen only supports DDR4 the Intel supports DDR4 and DDR5 but they are motherboard specific so you do have to find a motherboard that supports either of them. In terms of cache the Ryzen has 64 megabytes of cache whereas the Intel here has 25 megabytes. The base power or DDP has been rated at 105 watts on the Ryzen system and the 12700K has been rated at 125 watts. In terms of the turbo power or if you use Vision Boost Overdrive on Ryzen then I can see 199 watts pulled from the socket. Now this is subject to your motherboard and the silicon lottery as well depending which CPU you get you might be seeing more or less being pulled there. In terms of the 12700K the max turbo power has been rated to 190 watts but I am seeing up to 164 watts being pulled from the socket in here. The Ryzen doesn't have an iGPU whereas the 12700K has a UHD 770 iGPU which for creators is a huge thing especially if you're a video editor. When we're looking at the price the CPU on its own is actually cheaper when we look at the Intel side at around $376 and the Ryzen comes in at $391. Now this is at the time of me preparing and making this video. If you want to know the latest pricing of these CPUs and the components I'm talking about I'm going to leave the links in the description below where you can find the latest pricing. In terms of the motherboard pricing, I chose the Gigabyte X570 Aero G for the 5900X system, but then Gigabyte Aero G DDR5 version for the 12700K. And then we can see that the motherboard is actually a little bit cheaper on the 12700K than on the 5900X. At the same time, the DDR5, if you look at the Kingston Fury Beast that we're using on the Intel system, and then if you find the same RAM on DDR4 for the Ryzen system, System, then the RAM is quite a bit cheaper if you look at the same capacity like 64 gigabytes something like that then in terms of the RAM motherboard and CPU cost the Intel system is roughly around 80 to 90 dollars more expensive but is that price increase worth it in a moment we're going to find out in terms of the testing setup on the Ryzen side I'm using the MSI X570S Ace Max for the motherboard which has very good power delivery and is not going to handle kept our Ryzen in terms of the power performance and that's especially true when using the PBO and we're pushing more wattage through and so on so it's got very good power delivery and that's why I'm using that motherboard for this testing system. This 
is the motherboard for all of the Ryzen test bench setups because it just offers all of the features and it's not going to handicap any of the performance from Ryzen side. In terms of the cooling, we're using ROG Rouge in the 360mm AIO. The RAM is a 2 times 32 gigabytes of Kingston Fury Renegade at 3600MHz CL18. The GPU is ASUS RTX 3090 TUF and it's tested on the open test bench. In terms of the Intel side, we're using the ASUS Z690 Pro at Create the Motherboard. The cooler is the Fantex Glacier 1 360mm AIO. For RAM, we are using Kingston Fury Beast and that's four 16 gigabytes sticks and we're not running the XMP. There's no XMP applied for all of these test results. They're just at 4000 megahertz and CL36 if I'm not mistaken. The GPU is the same ASUS TUF RTX 3090 and it's tested in the Fantex P600 S case which is open side panel kind of an open test bench as well so then the performance differences first of all the power consumption to actually see how do these cpus perform and how much power do they draw the max cpu power from the 5900x i can see when running cinebench r23 is 135 watts that's stock settings just nothing applied on the motherboard BIOS, no overclocking, just stock, it pulls 135 watts. When enabling the PBO2 Position Boost Overdrive 2 in the BIOS, then I can see 199 watts pulled from the socket, quite an increase in power draw. In terms of the 12700K, I can see up to 164 watts pulled from the socket. So the 12700K seems to be a very good option in terms of the boost frequency, but also at the same time when idling, the 12700K uses so much less electricity, like it can run around 10 watts of 5 to 10 watts at idle because of the efficiency cores that are very, very efficient. The Ryzen idles much, much higher, like 30, 40 or even higher wattages. In terms of the overall electricity cost, the Intel system will be much more efficient. So then, first of all, Cinebench R23 scores. When enabling the PBO, we're gaining 0.25% in the single core score and 4.9% in the multi core score. The 12700K is about 20% faster in single core score and about 6.6% faster in the multi core score. Now that's interesting over here because the 12700K actually has less threads which means that the actual per core instructions, so IPC for the 12700K is very, very good. In Geekbench 5, the 5900X with PBO is actually going down slightly in single core performance, but then we're gaining about 1.3% in the multi-core performance. The 12700K is 11.6% faster in the single core scores and 8.2% faster in the multi-core scores. When looking at Blender and 3D rendering performance, the 5900X with PBO enabled gains 1.7% in the monster scene, 0.5% in the junk shop scene and about 2.8% in the classroom scene. Looking at the 12700K, which is actually 1.5% slower in the monster scene than the 5900X without any PBO enabled or so. In junk shop scene, the 12700K is about 27% slower and in classroom scene, it is about 2.5% slower. So Ryzen definitely wins in the 3D rendering performance. Moving on to Photoshop and photo editing performance. When enabling PBO in this program, I can see that we're actually slightly dropping in performance. In fact, it's within the margin of error, but I can still see a little bit of a drop in the average scores when looking at the PBO enabled score. So I wouldn't recommend enabling PBO when you're editing in Photoshop. The 12700K though is 15.7% faster in the overall score. The GPU score, interestingly, is 25.8% faster, even though we are using the same GPU. So for some reason, the 12700K really accelerates the um, RTX performance or just the GPU works better in there. Just interesting analysis. Moving on to Lightroom Classic, when enabling PBO on the Ryzen, we're gaining 0.8%, which is not really anything there. Interestingly, the active score, which is really single core performance scores, is actually about 1.3% faster and the passive score 
0.5% faster. So enabling the PBO, you're getting very, very slight performance increase, but really not worth it, the actual power consumption. The 12700K is about 8% faster in the overall score. The active score, which actually means working with the photos and, you know, moving the feathers and so on, is 11.8% faster. The passive score, which is multi-core performance, is actually still 5.6% faster, which is very impressive. Moving on to video editing performance and Premiere Pro, when enabling PBO on the Ryzen system, we're not really gaining any performance again here, just a massively bigger electricity consumption. But the 12700K here now is 33% faster in the extended overall score and 39.5% faster in the standard overall score. So if Premiere Pro is your editing software of choice, the 12700K is so much faster than the Ryzen here. So if you look at it a little bit more in detail, we can see that the main things over here are the extended and standard live playback speeds, which are 73% faster and 110% faster, which is more than double the actual performance. So the timeline performance when editing video is much faster on the Intel system. Moving on to After Effects, the PBO enabling again here doesn't give us any performance increase, but the 12700K is 15% better in the overall score. In terms of the multi-core score, the Ryzen here is actually better and the 12700K is about 13% slower, but at the same time, the GPU performance is better on the Intel side again at 26%. And the rendering performance and everything else is better on the Intel as well. So even in After Effects, I'd highly recommend the Intel CPU or platform. Moving on to DaVinci Resolve, enabling PBO, we're getting 0.1% increase on the Ryzen side. So not really worth it again in this program. The 12700K is three percent faster in the overall score in extended and standard scores but do bear in mind if you're using h265 codex then the igpu does accelerate it much more which is not really reflected on this test but if you do use that codec then the intel has a massive win because it has hardware acceleration for that inside the igpu in v-ray when enabling pbo we're getting a three percent increase in performance on the ryzen but the 12700k is about 8% slower than the Ryzen without PBO enabled. Which one is better, the 12700K or the 5900X? As a creator, I would highly recommend the Intel system over the Ryzen system whenever you're making the purchase. Now, depending on your budget and what you're doing, the Intel has something going for it that Ryzen don't have. One of them is the iGPU, which is a huge, huge performance increase in the video editing and timeline performance because it has two dedicated media Media engines inside the iGPU that can accelerate lots more codecs than any of your GPU can do. As you can see in our performance test here in video editing, we were using RTX 3090 on both of these systems, but yet the Intel absolutely smoked Ryzen just because of those dedicated media engines. So that's very good for video editors. At the same time, even for photo editing and other performance tasks apart from 3D rendering, the Intel is a better choice just because of the single core performance and overall it's just faster but also is more efficient as well it's very easy to cool no problem over there both of them are very easy to cool the only downside for the ryzen i saw was the pbo i was expecting a little bit more performance when seeing the you know power consumption increase so much but really pbo on this ryzen 5900x doesn't really work but if you do have a ryzen i highly recommend you check that out and test it on your system as well because you might have a very good you know silicon and you might get actually a better results in there just test it out but in my case with my cpu this wasn't worth it another thing that intel has going for it is the actual platform of future compatibility ryzen on this test platform is actually dead am4 socket is dead now so you don't really have any upgrade path the intel does have upgrade path and you can actually choose ddr4 and ddr5 motherboards depending you know for example the gigabyte z690 that i've mentioned here the aero g has ddr4 and ddr5 versions available so you can choose if you want to maybe lose a little bit of performance and go with 
with DDR4 motherboard, but then if you're wondering how much performance you actually lose, go check out my DDR4 versus DDR5 video. There you can see like in percentage wise, how much does the DDR5 actually give you or the increase of DDR5, how does that work for you? So you can really work out how much you would be losing performance if you didn't go with DDR5 and then didn't see these test results because obviously this was tested here with DDR5. Generally, me as a creator, the Intel 12700K looks like a much better option in, as a creator to me. Unless you're 3D rendering, then I guess the Ryzen is, is a better option there. If you need to render something all the time, um, maybe 100% of the time, then it does use less energy at 135 watts and perform a little bit better compared to the 12700 Okay. If you do want to check out the, the latest pricing for these CPUs as well as the test bench setup, check them out in the description below. And if you're planning to build a PC, I've got a PC build guide on my channel. Different budgets, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 and two and a half grand budgets on the channel. So check them out in the description below. I'll leave them there as well. Likes and subs and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.